Hello and welcome to the walkthrough for the boss man snare. I'm going to just dive right in and just show you some examples straight away so you can have a listen to see what it sounds like. And we've got two articulations. I'm going to start with the dampened and then we'll follow with the undampened version. This is playing along with the kit. The boss man snare is completely replacing the snare drum which was originally recorded. Here it comes. And if we just go to the second articulation, which is undampened. And now I'll just take you through each drum just so you can hear a little bit about all the mics that I used. Um, and just how different they sound and how they make up the overall sound of the drum. The drum itself is a Pearl Steve Ferroni signature. Uh, it's a 14 inch by six and a half and it's now discontinued, but it's one of those drums which just has so much magic. It's a much sought after drum. I um, it's got a very recognizable sound. It was essentially a, a, a clone of a Black Beauty. So it's uh, so it's nickel on, on brass and it just sounds absolutely fantastic. So I had to sample it. Let's just have a look at the individual mics. So we've got two mics on the top. I've got a SM57 and I've got a AKG C451. The 57 tends to capture more of the mid range and then the 451 is more of the lows and the highs. So let's just hear those together. So you can just hear the difference start with the 57 and then I'll show you 451. Then we've got the overheads, which were two AKG 414s. Putting that together with the direct sounds something like this. And then we've also got two different types of room mics. So this first one, the snare room, is a stereo set of mics. So it's two Octava ribbons, which were sitting about four meters away from the kit, either side, left and right. These ones are actually going through API preamp, so they sound quite punchy. Um, so we'll have a listen to that firstly. And then we've got the other ones. So these these two actually go together, but you can use the snare mono room on its own. So this is a, uh, another AKG 414. So I'll show you that on its own just to start off with. And then right next to it, you've got the MS room, which is the, the mid side part of the configuration. So both of these were set just in exactly the same place, about a meter away from the kit, a, a meter or so um, in a mid side configuration. So although you can't use the, the mid side mic or, or more specifically a side mic on its own, because it's going to sound very weird and a bit phasey. Um, when you use it in conjunction with this mono mic, you start to hear an overall picture of the room. So I'm just going to bring that up and you can bring it in and out as much as you like, depending on how much you want to hear of those sides. Okay, and then all together once more. Okay, let's have a quick look at just setting it up. So I'll presume that you already know how to set this up in Trigger 2. If you don't, 
go and look at my videos that I've already posted. There's there's a whole walkthrough on Trigger 2 and how to set it up in Logic or Pro Tools. That should cover kind of most of the DAWs because they're, they're, the others are very similar after that. So once you have everything installed, this is what you'll get greeted with. You've got all the individual mics, so you can just bring those in as you wish, one by one. Perhaps it was just the one that you wanted to use. Or we've got two presets as well. We've got the dampened or the undampened. And when you load up any of these individual ones, it actually defaults as the dampened, just so you know. And you can change them at any point. So if we're in this screen here, the main triggering screen, you can just go and change each individual one as you go to the undampened version or vice versa. However, if you go back to the browser, you can just load in that preset and it's gonna change all of them together all at once. So it saves you a little bit of time. So, so far I've just been completely replacing the snare that is there, but if you wanna augment it, so play it along with another snare that's already going, you can absolutely do that, of course. But one thing to do is to just check the phase. So I'm just gonna play that together um, and then have a little listen because although this drum is in phase with itself, it might be out of phase with the drums that you recorded wherever they were. So always double check that just to make sure. I'm just going to hit the old flip all phases button on here and just see which sounds better. There, so in this case, it sounds better with the boss man snare out of phase to the drum that's already playing. In case you're not sure how to do that, just have a listen and you're gonna notice that if it's out of phase, it's gonna sound thin and just not that good. If it's in phase, it's gonna sound much thicker and much more focused and much stronger. You're, you're gonna notice a difference just by flipping between the two. And bear that in mind anytime that you're bringing in even just a single sample, or if you're bringing in another sample to go along with this, make sure that they're all in phase just so everything sounds nice and strong. Um, the other thing you can do if you don't wanna use the actual T CI instrument, although I highly recommend you do because it sounds fantastic. If you don't want to use it, we've also got all the one shots as well. So they're included in this purchase. So you've got the dampened and you've got the undampened and we've got four different velocities of each. So soft, medium, hard and rim shot and included in each one, you have a few different mic breakdowns as well. So you've got the combined, that's all of them together. You've got the direct, which is just the close mics on the snare itself. And then you've got overheads and you've got the rooms. So you can always just bring one of those in if that's all you'd like to use. Lastly, if you want to trigger it by MIDI, you can absolutely do that as well, of course, with uh, Trigger 2. Just make sure that you've set that correctly before you do. So I have a MIDI loop, which is just about to be playing here. And what I've done is I've copied that to a MIDI channel as well. So I've got that here. And this is one which I'm going to be sending to Trigger 2. The snare is actually on D1. So what we need to do is we need to go over to Trigger 2, where we have our instrument loaded, go into settings, and then on the MIDI in, make sure that that is set to D1, which it is, lovely. So that means anytime a D1 is played, it's gonna be playing back this instrument. And then you also need to make sure that your MIDI channel is linked to the trigger instrument as well. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now play the software drums that we've got there, and I'm gonna bring in a boss man snare just so you can hear it in action with that. Okay, and there we go. And lastly, just to remember, just in case you forgot from before, make sure you flip the phases and ensure that they are in phase with this drum. So it, when I checked earlier, this was actually out of phase of the drum, so I had to flip it, but I'll just show you what it sounds like when if it's incorrect. I think that was quite clear which one was better and which one was worse. And that's about it. So if you have any questions at all, please feel free to hit them up in the comments um, or send me an email. If you've already purchased this, then my details will be in there and you can just send me a direct line. Okay, thanks very much for watching. See you soon.